afternoon, everybody, and welcome to uh, the penultimate uh, uh, show um, produced this summer by Dakamama Hawaii, uh, in which we are uh, introducing all of you to some of Hawaii's treasures of modern architecture. We've had a series uh, on this running all summer. Uh, we're getting towards the end of the summer now. Um, and over the course of the summer, we've looked at everything from suburban development, to urban planning. Today, we are going to take a look at some of uh, Hawaii's most interesting examples of religious architecture. And with me today, I have Tony Moy, who is the past president of Dakamomo Hawaii um, and a currently very actively involved member in every way. <laughs> she runs things a lot of the time. Um, and Tonia is going to, Tony has a, a particular interest in religious architecture on the islands and was going to introduce uh, both you and me uh, to uh, some of the, the more compelling examples um, of, of mid-century modernist Hawaiian religious um, so I'm re really looking forward to it because um, actually I don't even know some of the buildings are going to be there. Thanks, Thank Laura. <laughs> well, so and, and part of the, Dokomomo is having the symposium, and mm -hmm. we have Sacred Places tour. So some of these will be on the tour, but there's just so many really cool churches out yeah. there because you know religion is like a temple to God, right? Mm -hmm. So the, people are willing to put money and to make something awe-inspiring. So that. Um, that's why most, there's many beautiful and awe-inspiring churches. So, but before we um, get to some of these modern churches, we're going to start with the, um, the first slide, which is uh, Ka Kauai Hau Church, which mm -hmm. kind of everybody knows. But just to set a little context for Hawaii, and that is, you know, like, first, of course, there were the temples from the native Hawaiians, mm -hmm. and then missionaries. So this is the 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 big example of missionary churches in mm -hmm. Hawaii, which is the Kauai Ha'o Church, which is made of, so the, the local theme here is that it's made out of coral blocks, yeah. but otherwise it's a very um, New England style, right? Yes. It really reflects the New England style. So, and the next slide, so this is Hongpahonganji, this is 1918. So this shows um, like a little development where people are getting into more culturally inspired architecture. It's, um, you know, the missionaries kind of got divested and they went into plantations, which brought in a lot of the Asians. That's um, a big part of the uh, history of Hawaii. And so, you know, like there's a lot of little and big uh, Buddhist temple. So this is one that's in Nu'uwanu, and it's 1918, done by Emory and Webb. It's very Indian-inspired, though, so it's not really that Japanese as, um, as lots of the little plantation ones. If you go around the neighbor islands especially, mm -hmm. there's some plantation architecture of this era still, but it's still very Japanese, uh, very um, inspired by something particular. So in the next slide, which is built in 1929. So now we're getting a little on in time. People are getting off of the, some people are getting off of the plantations, you know, but it's mm -hmm. still pretty much an agricultural yeah. town and still pretty much run by, now the um, missionaries became the big five. Mm -hmm. So, it, but it's getting to be a town now. Mm -hmm. So this is a Chinese congregational, um, it's actually first Chinese Church of Christ. So, I mean, and obviously it had a Chinese congregation, yeah. right? <laughs> so, and this is done by Hart Wood, mm -hmm. who's another very kind of famous architect. And it's, it's in in, this one is really interesting to me because, you know, Hart Wood was, absorbed <laughs> some of the arts and crafts um, kind of influences. So you have this really interesting mixture of um, Chinese-ish design. I mean, it certainly yeah. doesn't look like any real historical Chinese architecture. Um, kind of creatively reinterpreted um, in an almost arts and crafts way. Right, yeah. yeah. And, um, but basically, you know, that the church, yeah, the church that basically is a very Christian, yeah. you know, it's the same floor mm -hmm. plan as he has, I think, for yeah. First Christ Church mm -hmm. in Makiki. So it's very, um, it's very Christian, very, mm -hmm. uh, very Caucasian yeah. in its origins, but lots of Chinese decorations. This is a really interesting um, 
kind of conceptual precedent, though, to actually some of the modern churches that I that we're going to be looking at in a few minutes, though, in that Wood is trying to come up with something new here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, he's not just doing historical New England stuff. Um, he's working on arts and crafts was pretty cutting edge at the time. Yeah. You know, it was modern um, for, for, for that time. 19, yeah. yeah. Um, so he's working within what was then a modernist style and introducing um, some of these Asian influences, trying to kind of come up with something, something. that would culturally fit. Right. So in yeah. the like the late twenties and early thirties, there was a lot of that interest in regionalism yeah. in Hawaii. So yeah. and Hartwood was one of those the key architects who kind of followed that path. Mm -hmm. So that's like a whole nother show. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff everywhere. Yes. <laughs> and so the, the next um, church, which is done, at, which is 1931, kind of contemporary with the uh, Chinese Christian mm -hmm. church and very close to the Chinese Christian mm -hmm. church is the Makiki Christian church. And this is, this was done by a Japanese architect, mm -hmm. Hego Fuchino. And um, it, it's like a, it's literally taken after Himeji Castle. Yeah, yeah. So it's very, very Japanese mm -hmm. and pretty literal in its interpretation mm -hmm. of the style. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it's, it's a time when people are trying to um, bring in cultural, mm -hmm. it, you know, some little cultural things into the architecture, not just uh, the New England style yeah. that everyone kind of brought in at first, mm -hmm. right? So... The um, next slide is just an article that we found, I and mean, this is for modern, you know, it, about modern um, churches, and it was just, you know, kind of like talking about the new look and how it's not at all um, like an old church anymore, and it, you don't look at anything the same way. And but it was an, it was actually a good review for the, those modern churches mm -hmm. for change, you know, and there's. A lot of churches that start going into um, suburbs, right? Mm -hmm. So that there's expansion of suburbs after the war. There's everybody's you know spreading out, and people are getting more money. So there's a lot of little churches that pop up here and there. Um, no longer just at one huge congregation of a church. The only sad thing I find about this one is I, there's two that are gone from this picture. Oh, right which now. ones? So, so the um, the one on the bottom left. Okay. And the one on the top left. Yeah, the one on the bottom left is spectacular. It, it's it, amazing arrow. Yeah, <laughs> arrow know, shape that shoots was, towards it heaven. Was. <laughs> I, I have a, I have another picture in the uh, of it because yeah, it, we took some pictures before it got torn down. The other one we missed, I think. These are just in, and we're going to look at um, some better photos of these. But I think what is striking to me is that they are so formally striking. I mean, these are very experimental, big geometries, really powerful. Um, and just as, uh, as you mentioned, Tonia, because of the massive amount of expansion and suburban development after mm -hmm. the war, all of a sudden there are all of these opportunities for these smaller community churches to right, be constructed, right. centers yeah. for people to gather, right. um, which is ends up being a really great opportunity for architects yeah. to kind of flex but, their yeah. experimental <laughs> Yes, and a lot of them were very experimental, yeah. you know, so, and, and it was in new technology, mm -hmm. right? So the 60s, 50s, 60s brings in new technology so they could try all these different things. Mm -hmm. um, some, I guess, didn't work as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, a lot, lot of them are still here. And, and yeah, that's interesting how we're talking about the expansion. I think most of these are not in Honolulu. Yeah, that would They're make sense. They're on the outskirts. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that's another pretty interesting thing. So the next, in the next slide, this is one of, you know, the, your, your the building favorite. building with which I'm well uh, familiar. Yeah, you're very involved with. <laughs> And so this is surprisingly 1953, mm -hmm. which is pretty early yeah. after the war. Um, so Alfred Price, who uh, that's a that can be a whole nother show again, but <laughs> you know he did this technique with this large aggregate, mm -hmm. so using local rock. Mm -hmm. And I think um, well the next slide I think shows a little bit more. Yeah. How he just you know so it opened up the the sides are actually completely open the top yes. side is completely open to the um, outdoor climate. So yeah. it's a very inspired by Hawaii's uh, climate, I mm -hmm. guess, more than, more than the multitude of cultures that we have here. Yeah. But the climate, the rocks, the, you know, the mm -hmm. geometry of Hawaii is, is reflected, I think, in Alfred Price's 
church. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole concept of this, what's an indoor outdoor church, you know, mm -hmm. which becomes really a, a predominant um, idea in mid century um, architecture in Hawaii. Uh, I mean, where else do you see architects making indoor outdoor churches? Not that many places. Not that many places you know, can, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, so I think that, like, you know, at least in my opinion, that's one of the things that, that makes sacred spaces um, on these islands so interesting from this time period mm -hmm. um, is that they're taking traditional kinds of forms. I mean, Christian churches have certain liturgies that you have to follow. You have to have an altar in one place. Mm -hmm. You have to have a right. processional. Yeah. But then they're kind of trying to integrate those ideas with the climate yeah. as well. Right. Yeah. And this one is one of the best examples, I think, mm -hmm. of the of use of uh, Hawaii's climate. And the next slide shows the interior of it, which is, you know, it's, it's kind of stark in a way, but mm -hmm. it's very, you know, I still find it very, like, awe-inspiring. You go there and you've, the, just the use, his use of the natural light. Exactly. You know, just yeah. makes it, the cross just stand out there. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I think it's one of my favorite churches. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just very airy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And I, I think, you know, the, the thing that I, besides just the, the aggregate and the concrete and, and the, the um, illuminated cross um, are these, uh, these rafters above, which are done in wood. And even though they're done in these very angular kinds of forms, you know, there is a precedent for that in Gothic architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, where you have large, or at least in New, Eng New England Gothic architecture, where you have these um, large support structures of the roof done in wood, um, done in very sculptural mm -hmm. styles. Mm -hmm. And in a way, Price has taken that idea, mm -hmm. but he's made it modern. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I think he's one of the best at abstracting mm -hmm. ideas yeah. and making it into something uh, modern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of my favorite architects as well. So um, moving on from Alfred Price, we have a couple of examples of A-frames, mm -hmm. which became a very popular form because I think it was not that difficult to do. Um, probably cheap. Probably, too. <laughs> yeah, pretty, you know, yeah, the roof is the same as your wall. Yeah. It's all kind of the same thing. So um, it, there's a, there's a lot of A-frames in Hawaii. So this is one of, I think, one of the more successful ones or the, the more with a lot of detail. So this is Kalihi Union Church. Mm -hmm. And so the next slide, I think we see where, so it shows you how, how this particular architect, which is done by Lon Wilson, handled the, um, the A-frame itself, right? That's, which is like a, um, a laminated wood mm -hmm. beams, which, which is also fairly new at this time in 1957, still fairly new technology. So that is, you know, that allowed them to have these white spances. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I kind of, it's interesting the way they handle the end because at the yeah. very end, of course, you couldn't have a room because yeah. there would be nothing there. And then this shows that the, there's a lot of still Asian influence in mm -hmm. the architecture. It's, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, when we were looking at these photos before, I hadn't seen this one. I mean, but this, blending of the shoji screens, yeah. you know, with, uh, with a Christian church is, is just absolutely fascinating. Um, and this, you know, uh, beautiful um, wooden shake roof and then the, um, the, rock. the lava rock. Yeah. yeah, really textural. Right. And like a lot, lot of the churches, right, they could open all those shoji doors yeah. and, you know, you can expand your congregation mm -hmm. or you could just have the air flowing in mm -hmm. and out. So. Um, it was very popular. And there's one more. Um, on the next slide, there's another A-frame that I just, oops, oh, did I not throw it in? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. We're actually, it, so anyway, we might there, find one there, later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it might pop up again. So I guess what we're kind of um, alluding to or what, we're, we're, what Laura and I talked about was how earlier they were like little more literal in their translation. Mm -hmm of Asian or, um, or any cultural uh, thing. So this is Soto, which was done in 1952, mm -hmm. and it was done by um, Fuchino and Katsuyoshi, so both Japanese, right? Mm -hmm. So they really have, they had a lot of the Japanese tradition in their wheelhouse, so to yeah. speak. 
So this one is a um, little on the Indian side, but mm -hmm. it's still uh, very Japanese. And this is done in 52. And so the next slide. So but I want to oh, stop sorry, you sorry. real quick. Go, um, yeah. I'm, I'm really interested. Do you have, since we've seen two um, of uh, these temples that have mm -hmm. these Indian influences, mm -hmm. where is that coming from? Because um, Buddhism actually in the uh, yes yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that, but that's, it's interesting yeah. to see that happen here you know right. because you don't see that happen so much in japan or in china there's a little bit but More, to have yeah. this kind of revival yeah um, I, I guess hawaii people, people just could just pull from wherever they wanted to <laughs> that's 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 really interesting <laughs> it is it is you know architects kind of creatively mining all of these cultural yeah, sources yeah Okay, yeah. Because it was available to people mm -hmm. more here, probably, yeah. than in Japan or China. That's so, a good point, yeah. too. Okay, so oh, so the next one, the, this is a slide of, it's another Soto Zen temple, but this is in, in Waipahu, so it's kind of hard for people to get to, but it's, um, this one is done in 1973 by Robert Katsu, I'm not Robert, I'm sorry, Robert Matsushita who um, passed away fairly early, so we don't have too many of his work. But to me, this one is kind of a phenomenal uh, abstraction mm -hmm. of, you know, it's like it's totally different from the other one. And the way he really used modern techniques, like, so that's a gutter. Okay. Right? So, um, and then the next slide actually shows an overall mm. a view that they had of it. So th this one is more alluding to me, it alludes more to like um, Hawaiian architecture. Yeah. Like he's trying to, you know, return to like the Hawaiian roots mm -hmm. of um, this place and mixing it with a little bit of the Asian in the Soto. Yeah, Zen. because you have that base that, yeah. that looks like uh, traditional Hawaiian spaces yeah. of worship. Right. Um, with the Asian, and it's, mm -hmm. it's just a fascinating uh, admixture of all of these yeah. different sources. Incredibly creative. Yeah. And very, very uh, powerful in its materiality, yeah. too. It's, yeah, so it's like kind of, in a way, super simple. Yeah. Yet it's so striking. It that, is. Yeah. I, I really admire this piece of architecture. So. Then I have a, just a bunch of slides yeah, well, that are like take a kind look. of chronological. Uh -huh. So again, 1952. So again, it's kind of more on the literal mm -hmm, side. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's actually what became Architects Hawaii, but Lemon and Free. Oh, okay. It's an Episcopal church in Nuuanu. So, it um, makes you wonder if, um, if they were responding to the requests of the particular congregation, too, you know, because con religious right. communities are different. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you have a group that is, say, more interested in retaining their Chinese heritage and having that be very, very visible right. in the church, that might have been something that came through here as the architect worked on the design. Yeah. And that's very true, but, but I think by the 60s, mm -hmm. it mostly disappears. Okay. So that's kind of an interesting yeah. thing in itself, right? Yeah. That no longer, maybe no longer do the groups feel they have to stick together. Mm -hmm. And now they are more part of the United States. Mm -hmm. or, so then they kind of have a little more modern, uh, contemporary at that time, you know, looking at what's in the USA kind yeah. of a thing. Or what's. Becoming we American. Become American, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the next one, I think we're just going to go down. So this is the other oh, A-frame I had. Great building. Yeah, which yeah. is a beautiful building. And they took advantage of the A-frame by having that end wall be a, a total um, stained glass window. So, you know, talk you about know, being awesome, inspiring. Do you have any idea who designed the stained glass? Of that? Oh. I, used to, I, have, I haven't I, been I, inside, and I'm imagining it just must be this glorious shock of color. It, it is. It's um, a, and it was built um, for for the military. Oh, okay. So the stained glass, and I, actually, I I do know it somewhere, but I can't think of. It's not like Karina, mm -hmm. you know, who did a lot of stained glass for churches. It's not her. It's um. Somebody else, but they did it for the military. So it's got mm. some military theme going in. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. But I mean, you know, talk about awe-inspiring, right? When you go yeah. in and whoa, there's that wall of glass and mm -hmm. color and, 
and just so beautiful. So and even is, more interesting, and in a way, to me, from in terms of the way churches are usually set up, I don't know what the other side looks like if there's stained glass on the other end. But um, no. the fact that this is is to your back, and you kind of yeah, when you leave is when right. you would actually be experiencing yeah, the stained that's glass. Right. That's you know, right. as you re-enter the world, you yeah. go through this. Um, a, a transcendental kind of moment. <laughs> right. Well, then there's the military theme, so yes, it brings you back too. to <laughs> this is your reality. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, so this one is done by Clifford Young, who um, recently I just found out that he was the one who brought I am pay oh. to do East West Center. Oh, interesting. Because they were classmates. Okay. So, yeah, I just found that out. Important like, connection. I know, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So, he's done some really fabulous work, in mm -hmm. the, this, including this church. So, 57, mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, like a lot of these things, they're just good transport to today, right? And yeah. then the next, the next slide, so this is uh, just to show, like, how um, there's all different religions coming in and this is Ed Salom's Temple Emmanuel mm -hmm. and then we'll just run through some slides so that and this is actually um, actually if you want to go back to the Temple Emmanuel um, one of the things I, I've been in this building a number of times and one of the things that I think is striking about it is it's very modest from the outside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but the interior um, actually does have these uh, lines of stained glass and illumination on either side of that um, central white Mm -hmm. uh, pillar, which also really brings the space to life. Um, and it's quite a beautiful building uh, on, yeah. on its interior. Uh, small, too, because the Jewish community, um, at least on Oahu, is, is quite small. Mm -hmm. um, I think it used to be bigger, but <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's shrunk a little bit. Um, but many of these buildings, I always sense, are really supposed to be experienced from the inside. It's that is true. Really critical. True. Um, you drive by it and you think, okay, but it's when you go in that that's you're... even more beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but a lot of these churches are pretty nice on the exterior too. Mm -hmm, they are. <laughs> so, yeah, especially these modern churches. Um, let's see. Now we can continue on our little travel around. Oh, this it's is just the... such a wonderful photograph. <laughs> yeah. So the, this is 1960. It's it's New technology at the time, mm -hmm. folded plate construction. And this architect who was not from Hawaii, oh. but he did a lot of Baptist churches. Interesting. Um, yeah, he was military. And so this is very close to the military base as well. But he was inspired by the Ko'olau mountain range. Mm. And you can pretty much see that. <laughs> um, and this was done in 1960. And 19, oh, so the next slide is we're just going to go through as many as we can before we get kicked out. I think we've got five minutes left, so okay. we're, we're okay. <laughs> so this is Harris Memorial Church. I think I have an interior shot of it. Mm. Can we see the next slide? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I do not. Oh, well. Okay. Um, yeah, if just going back to that, um, that's... Uh, it, Sort of, a, it's not an A-frame anymore. It's an A-frame yeah. with a flat roof on top. But um, you know, taking that earlier interest in the A-frame, and then the architect is is playing with that idea. Yeah, the very steepness. Yeah. And kind of like two praying hands. Mm -hmm. and... uh, but still, um, I think at least I see a, a playing with the idea of the Native Hawaiian lanai too, with that large roof structure being. Right, um, the Hale the, has the focal the, point, the Hale, right. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting my words mixed up today, it's gotten a little late. Um, but yes, the Hale, exactly, yeah. and the roof yeah, being with the, the dominant feature. The dominant the, feature. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, so the next slide is that, oh, this is funny. 1965, and this is a Wimberley, this is the one that got, it's torn down. Oh, well, that's so sad. Yeah, so the difference with this folded plate roof and the other one we saw in 1960 mm -hmm. is this one was made out of wood. Okay. So it slowly sagged till it had to be demolished, unfortunately. But it was another, it was also said to be inspired by the Ko'olau range. Yeah, those geometries are just really mm -hmm. quite amazing. They're yeah. Incredibly pointy and incredibly complex but um, not in an overly complex way. It's a good balance. Yeah, it's all in the roof. Yeah. 
Uh, and then the next slide is a, is a great church as well. Um, and this, this one, so to compare it with like that Chinese Christian church, mm -hmm. this is a Chinese congregation okay. as well. And it, was, and it was done by Chinese architects. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so Wang and Wang did this in uh, 1965. So, but, you know, it's like totally a shape that's yeah. not familiar to anything, really. Yeah. Um, and it's made with lava rock, mm -hmm. which is local material. So it's really very, to me, very, very unique. And they ha Wong and Wong has done um, projects that have very Chinese influence. Mm -hmm. You know, like the consulate, right, close to oh, the yes. church? So that's Wong and Wong also. So they have okay. some very modern, it's modern, but has some details in there. So this, but this one is like, very unique to me. It's modern, but because of the use of that uh, lava rock, it, it has this timeless, ancient quality mm, yeah, to it. Um, yeah, and almost you can almost see it like a heyao, but not really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's straddling the old and new, yeah. I think, in in a really effective way. But also, as in some of the other churches, evoking the the, the steep mountain ranges. Right, yeah, and it's in a different way. And mm -hmm. then that, you know, like acting like a steeple in the front. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. So it's got its church features, but just very done in a very different way, mm -hmm. right? That might be one of the more creative examples that I think we've seen so far. Yeah. I would have liked to have been in the office listening a fly on the wall. Yeah. Was there. <laughs> like, like, how did that shape come about? I, yeah. <laughs> I know, unfortunately, they're not around anymore yeah. either. Uh, so, um, and then the next one is uh, another, actually, Wong and Wong. Mm -hmm. So this is Manoa Valley Church. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he, they really played a lot with geometry. So the slope, I, you probably can't really tell because of the um, perspective, but the, it goes down, right? So yes. it goes, so the back goes down. Yes. It's not just a straight A-frame. It's mm -hmm. an A-frame triangle kind mm -hmm. of a thing. And the interior effect, I've been in, in this one too, is it is you enter to, from the back and it is quite low down and then the space kind of shoots up and expands right. um, in, in front of you. And it also, the, the sides can be open, giving another indoor-outdoor yeah. uh, kind of feel. Mm -hmm. And the interior is done in this really exquisite wood. Um, so it's a very uh, sensory um kind of uh, uh immersive sort of environment yeah which is really great yeah. for a church right so i have to unfortunately we're about out of time um but this is a good one to end on anyway i think it embodies a number of the qualities that we were talking about just with the a-frame um it's surrounded by the mountain um but i want to thank tonia so much for putting all of these wonderful images together Thanks, um Laura. and <laughs> coming and being on the show. We've had a great summer. We've seen so many wonderful buildings all summer. The Dakamomo Symposium is coming up soon, and we mm -hmm. hope to see you all there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.